Jehova Malak, Ola Malamat, Jehova Malak, Yame Rakes, Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Manta Greta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Elda at Jehova, Yel Yamuna Jehova. Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Panta Creta. Baslios, Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurio. Yehova the Bar Halal. Elohim the Bar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion ni mahagion panta kreta, gadol gadol, geburra. Yehova ishmal kam, Yehova shamma. Yel nakum Yehova, yel nakum yapa. Netzak Israel, la sheker, gava gava, triembos Yehova, Isus Christos panta kreta, gadol gadol, geburra. Zaan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Jesus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa Pantagreta, Gadol, Gadol, Geburra, Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim, Elohim, Ille Ila Eshalut Malak, Yehova Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Geburra, Derek Emuna Bakar Mishfat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkenu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in the nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives, the praise of Lord God's glory. In order to understand our eternity, Rather than understanding the life on this earth where men are trying to live a life of absolute deception. This deception of life, what these people that are trying to live, has made them not to know the word of God. Satan's deadliest weapon which would kill it off is the word of God. So Satan doesn't want the present Christendom or in the past of the Israelites as well not to learn the truth, not to understand the truth, as we have been noticing some of the things yesterday, particularly regarding the viewpoint of the theological seminaries in the present Christendom have been ruined by the strategies of commandments of men or the concepts of men, rather than the prescription demands of the word of Lord God. As such, when we look them, it's really a great pain in our heart to understand as such, how these people, they are letting go this great infallible and ignorant word of Lord God, which ought to be their life. So, dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and learn the mind of Christ, because without the word of Lord God, without the mind of Christ, there is nothing on this earth which could be desirable. There is nothing on this earth which could be more pleasant. So first priority number one, to learn the word of God. 
without this we don't have any life without this word of lord god we don't have anything else on this earth to do so dear brethren use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound and let's come back and learn the things which god the father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in a treaty pass to the praise of his glory we shall continue after this prayer Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique power, the wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord. Because without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, rather than understanding the scriptures, you will misunderstand, though you are a believer, because not only just being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit makes the difference, but you have to be in the realm of becoming a disciple. without a discipleship orientation without making up your life to get back to the great vigor and valor what he has designed for us so that your days could be like the days of your adolescent or youth and you could be like the realm of this great lad or great baby so you have to come back to understand not just the fellowship but disciple oriented fellowship If you are not over here born again to be the disciple of the word of Lord God, though by default you are a disciple, John 1-12, your entire life has been ruined. Because, dear brethren, the present pulpits in the professing Christendom, what we are living today, has been entertaining you with lies. They are not teaching to you the truth. They are not teaching you the wisdom. If they were teaching you the wisdom, they would have surely made you to understand to carry your cross every day and follow my Christ. Since they are not teaching to you the wisdom, you have been surrounded by every difficulty in your life and you are not able to realize why God the Father wants you to walk in the light of the living of man, in the living light of man, The real men or the people who are doing real life are the ones who are carrying their cross every day and following my Christ joined as disciples growing up into grammatias. This real men teach the truth. And Satan doesn't want you all to learn the truth. Therefore, dear brethren, getting back into fellowship, not just like a Christian but a disciple. Because you are born again, you are born again as a disciple, John 1-12. And being disciple, their duty is to grow up into grammatias and growing up to make all disciples of the nations. So in order to grow up, in order to mature, make sure you're getting back to learn the word of Lord God with consistency of mind. You cannot let it go even a millionth of a second in your life, not just one second, a millionth of a second, far less you can think. You can gap up for six days and come on the seventh day and you can become holy, no dear brother. You are being named as professing Christians. And that professing conventional Christians will not yield to be glorification of God, though you are called and justified. So dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to learn back the things which God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. To the praise of His glory after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pallid wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of Lord to learn thy word. We pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message to the praise of your glory. Since we don't deserve anything on this earth except your grace, we pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost to challenge us and to equip us to thoroughly fulfill thy desires on this earth when we love and obey your commandments to guard it. As we study these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in every past to the praise of your glory. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The present Christendom, as in the past we should look in the 17th or 18th century, They were trying to teach the word of God in exegesis every day. But now when we look even not to the 19th century, in this 21st century, Christians have destroyed to the core for the lack of knowledge of God. 
where there is no proper revelation of the word of Lord God, there the people will perish. Why men are not able to understand the importance of this Bible? Because they don't love my Lord. If they would have loved my Lord, they would have learned this love letter of God for us. And man is so cunning, when he has been the first love of his life, the only woman, if ever like Adam and Eve. And if the woman wants to write, communicate something through the love letter, not like the texts what we are going to use now in the smartphones, but earlier the love letter. If it has been a love book or a diary, something where the husband loves to write about the woman and the woman loves to write about the husband. Now, the husband finds ample of time on this earth to go back and read that letter and he wants to find how the heart of the woman is all about. And the woman deeply madly love with that husband. She wants to know what exactly is her husband. Because the creation what God the Father built the woman she would always pay you back double. And that's what men don't understand. Why God created woman to be a right helpmate. Man thinks he's a slave. No. He's a slot machine. She's a slot machine. No. She's the one who's going to pay you back in all her beauty double the thing what you could give to her. The same concept with the church. <coughs> God the Father through His Son has given us His mind so that we could pay back double. In everything whatsoever we do, we have to pay back double. And that's the sole reason why the church has been indwelled by Lord God the Holy Ghost. In every believer, whosoever believeth upon Him, the gift at the moment of salvation sealed until the day of redemption, Lord God the Holy Ghost to guide you, to lead you, to learn the mind of Christ, so that you could have the love affair with God the Father in such a great way that you are not at all ashamed. Your love affairs with Christ, to talk His terms, to learn His terms, to behave in His terms, because while you are in youth, you are having so much of time to go back and cross-check what your girl likes and what the boy likes, and you love to go crazy about that girl. About or about that boy because you want to fulfill. For some relationships on this earth you want to be in such a way. But you have forgot what Christ our Lord of God has given for us in full. He gave his only begotten son, Mone Gine, not the human sacrifice as these people foolishly think. You know why the people don't understand Bible doctrine? Because it's spiritual phenomenon. It's not natural or soulish phenomenon. So that they can reason with their mind. They can think upon with their standards of life. No. Or rationalism or empiricism. Whatsoever they are. Because the decoding part of the spiritual things will be done by Lord God the Holy Ghost. When you have been born again in Christ. An atheist or the one who doesn't believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He will not be given the Holy Spirit to indwell in him. Though he may say, no Muslim is a Muslim if he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. If the same Quran says he was been born as a virgin bird, there ends the matter. And they don't consider him to be God because he was miraculously born as a virgin bird. They believe that. Why the virgin bird? Because no passing down of the old sin nature of Adam virginal sin. And they don't understand why. Because God wants a one who is absolutely sinless to be satisfied for his righteousness to be credited for the sinful man, being the mediator between God and man. And that's how simple it is, why he was been virgin birth. And no Adam original sin, then he's been sin free. Then he's eligible for us to pay as a propitiation for Christ. The unlimited atonement, the justification, so that we could now learn and understand how much we have been saved by the virgin birth of Christ. The people may believe that, but the people don't understand that his divinity. Why? Because they don't believe him as God. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the true and the life. 
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection. And when he had a great discourse in John chapter 8, he says, I am before Abraham was. The omniscient God knows very well what he's teaching to these people, but these people's brains are dull. They can't comprehend the thinking of Christ because that time they couldn't have the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And now, today, you're going to be given the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by faith alone in Christ alone, when you come to learn that you are believing in Christ. And that's the reason why you have to believe in Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be your Savior so that He is God. And He came in this flesh to be man. The true doctrine of kenosis. And when he has been there as God and as man, in that he is equal with man and equal with God, he has been the mediator, he has been the perfect mediator, so that we could now walk upon that cross and get into the heaven or eternity. But the problem with his unbelieving mind is that they don't believe him in God, though they believe in his virgin birth. The virgin birth no inculcation or passing down of the Adam's original sin. And those who are not sin, they have to go to the cross. But you find all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All men have sinned through Adam's original sin, passing down to all men. And that's what how man has been born. And that's no need of explanation why, how and how the man will be born. 23 chromosomes of the male fertilizing the 23 chromosomes of the female. As the word in the Hebrew, the bak, pros kune in the Greek, or pros apello in the Greek. And they have these things. Pros kaleo. Face to face sex. The back cleaving unto his wife. But here, Virgin Mary, or the birth of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we be virgin birth, is not proskalao or the back. And that's how Joseph thought secretly I would leave her. And the angel of the Lord God comes unto him and explains. And then now he realizes the concept of God. And all these things have been told, not that you should believe, but you should know how God can work out his pale wonders, his marvelous deeds, because the sinful man cannot understand. He cometh into the world, he passes down his life for food and hunger, and for clothing and shelter. And that's what he thinks. This is great achievement. Why? Because he has earned some lot of money, is able to provide food for the people, is able to have some shelter. He's able to protect his family for the fourth or fifth generation and then he thinks his life is just gone. That's how Satan makes you all to understand, not to look Matthew 6.33 which says, First you seek his righteousness and his kingdom, then all these things will be added unto you. Because like pagans, you're worrying what to eat, what to drink, but you're not seeking to look what is the desire of God the Father who has designed you to resolve this angelic conflict. And we have been told in 1 Corinthians 6 chapter in verse number 3, specifically to teach, we are here to judge angels. The angels are constantly absorbing us, 1 Corinthians 4, 9. And the angels love to look and learn what exactly the churches are teaching, 1 Peter 1, 12. How much we have been associated, why God created man on this earth, if not why, what was need of man being created by God to resolve this angelic conflict, to go on to be in the one third part of the fallen angels which have been there to be replaced by us. Our life is not just oriented to think what we eat or what we drink or what we air, what we understand or what we think to rationalize the scriptures or having the reasons of making up yourself into the real, not by faith to believe the scriptures. Because you love to have your rationalism or empiricism and apart from that you don't have anything else your brain could ever think. Just think, what is that in your brain? Your conscious, subconscious mind, your left and right hemispheres of the brain, your frontal lobes of reasoning, your motor and sensor nerves which run through and fro. What else do you have in your brain? Nothing, dear brother. It is the faculty of the mind to perceive in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you can understand. 
that it is above in the hands of men that God could work his work. Man cannot work salvation. That's what the religion comes into play. Not by a good deed you have been saved, but by faith alone in Christ alone. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Not by a good deed, but by the grace of Lord God the Father, what he has done for us, you are going to be saved. And today people don't understand the importance of these words. Therefore they have been yet aliens to the cause. Because they doubt God. They doubt my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They doubt the virgin birth of my Christ. So need not worry. We have seldom to prove them. Neither we have any debates to talk to them. Because in the present Christendom we are having a lot of work first to renovate. If our Christendom has been first rate being taught every day the word of Lord God. Then we can make our people to understand a great word of God. Whether those people will realize it or not. I meant to say referring to unbelievers. Whether they believe it or not. We seldom care because we want first our eternal life to be secured. We look the people in the viewpoint of eternity. Not in the viewpoint of the lifespan of life on this earth. What they're going to spend 80 years or 120 years, whichever cost may be. If they have been sin, they would just erase out as God the Father knows very well. And some of the people at a very early age, because they cannot handle the depressions or the details of life, they're just going to end up suiciding. Just look your life in the viewpoint of eternity, dear brethren. That's seeking his righteousness and his kingdom, not in the viewpoint of what you eat, what you drink, like the pagans who worry. And that's why the Christendom has drifted away. And the same thing whenever we look into the unbelievers, though they debate, we don't want to win the debate. Though they may love to propagate, because Satan knows very well what is the truth. So Satan doesn't want to produce the truth to the minds of these people. It has blinded their eyes. It has blinded their thinking so that they can never believe the truth. They will never believe in their lifetime what is the truth. In their lifetime, they come back to believe exactly what is lies. Therefore, they go on to propagate lies. Because the work of the tares in the field are greater than the work of the wheat. Zizion, we read the word. So these tares and the wheat, they look same, except the color could be changed. When it has been ripened up, till they could grow up, it doesn't, it doesn't show the difference. And Zizion will be like a poison. The color will be somewhat changed in comparison to the wheat. And why they want such kind of a life? Because people love lies. People love that which is easy. People doesn't want to carry that which is cross. People don't realize their body is not their own. They have been brought up with a great authority by Lord God. Therefore, dear brethren, you have been made for the work of Christ, but in return, since you are not able to walk in the work of Christ, you are going to destroy your own life in such a way as we find over here in Ezekiel chapter 5, which emphasizes for us in verse number 9, to teach or to hold back or to come back to Ephesians or Ezekiel chapter 5 in verse number 9, we read over here saying that, I will do in thee that which I have not done, because your body is mine. I have all authority. You know how to illustrate that in First Corinthians 7 and 8, we look about the conditions of a marriage. So here, the wife has all authority over the body of a husband, and husband has all authority over the body of a wife. That's how I can illustrate for you the best from the Bible. Because you don't understand your body is your, not your own. You have been bought up with a great price. Glorify God the Father in your body. When you're not able to realize this, at least we would love to talk to you in these terms. So, your complete subjection, your body, he says, for a woman, it's a husband, own husband. And for a husband, it's her own wife. The logic is very simple over here. In the same way over here, he says in Ephesians 5, sorry, in Ezekiel 5, in verse number 9, 
I will build up Asa in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. The things that I'm going to perform in you, I will not do anywhere else. Why? Because of your abominations, the way you're walking, the way you're not able to realize the truth, the way you're not able to think and understand your purpose of life, the way you're not able to realize that you have to first seek the righteousness and the kingdom of God. The word abomination is very, very important for us over here. The Hebrew word is to'eba. And the word to'eba, to'eb, meant to say that which is abominable filth, that which is disgusting. And Toeba over here in the pictographical representation teaches that in your body you're having authority not of mind but of Satan. If you were mine, as he said over there in the Gospel of Luke, if these people were mine, they would fight for me. Witnessing before Pontus Pilate. So the same thing over here. Your body, what you're having as a sign of authority, exactly it belongs to Christ, but you have made it to give place for Satan. Do you know why? Because you do not know what is the word of God. And Satan's deadliest weapon is the word of God. It doesn't want you to know what exactly is in the word of God, at least like the Berian crowd, because Bible has all the examples, all the evidences. Tomorrow I cannot claim before God saying, Lord, if you would, would have given earlier to us about the Berean crowd, maybe we corrected ourselves. But God the Father has given you in the first book of Acts itself. They were more eager. They were more ready. They wanted to go and cross-check whether the scriptures were so or not. The same thing over here as well. Your body has the authority of Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, he said in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, your body is not your own, you have been bought up with a great price. The same thing in Galatians chapter 6, when Apostle Paul says, I bear in me the marks of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let no one disturb me. Why? Because he knows now, his body has been having the authority. So I have meant to say disgusting, abominable thing for you in the strong code number or BDB. But in the pictographical representation, the first thing what he represents is the cross. And cross is a symbol for sign, a sign of authority. So now you have to cross check what is that abomination. Do you have a sign of authority of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ like, like Apostle Paul so that no one can disturb you? Or do you have an essence in your knowledge to think in 1 Corinthians 6.19 which says your body is not your own bought up with a great price? Or have you changed your body into having the authority of Satan to reign and rule in you by disobeying and not walking to obedience to love and to guard the demands of the word of Lord God? If you are really being in the authority of Lord God the Father, you would carry your cross every day and come to learn the mind of Christ. That's the very simple point what I want to teach. Look upon you if it is an abomination. Who is having authority upon your body? If Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is having his authority over your body, then you have to follow his commandments. Doesn't he say in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, if anyone doesn't love the philos love, the demands of the word of Lord God, which is not just 35%, but 70% and above. If you're not having that 70% of love towards Christ, he says, you are really cursed. You are anathema. Your entire life has been waved off. Why? You know why? Because you are being still due to the Lord. You have been not being eligible to give your body as a living sacrifice to Christ. Dear brethren, how much of your life you're still paying back to Christ? Just cross-check your life. If you want to look in this professing Christendom, as we calculated the three categories of the Christians on this earth, the carnal corrupted ones at one end, the second end, the soulish believers, who are emotional Christians, who love to come weekly ones, who love to pay the tithes, who love to do this, who love to do that, but they don't come every day to carry the cross and come to Christ and become disciple, growing up into grammar tears and in return going and making to fulfill the great commandment of my Lord God, which has been given for us as a great commission. 
Matthew 28, 18 through 20. They love to become the standards of emotional Christians, soulless Christians, but never they will become spiritual Christians. If it were in the time in the past of the 17th or 18th or 19th century, around 2 or 2.5 percent of the world would be as to be said among the midst of this professing Christian. Today, if you would look, it would be not even 0 0.02 percent. So much of deterioration in our pulpits. Because there is no proper teaching of the word of Lord God. There is no proper fear of the Lord God to be taught, inculcated every day to look what will be their life if they die. They are not able to look their life in the viewpoint of eternity, what God the Father has chosen us to, to, to look and to see that. The viewpoint of eternity. And how stupid is our life yet? Point two percent at least. Spiritual Christians, the Christians who are not lost their savor, who know the mystery doctrine of the church age in comparison to that salt is savor. If you lose it, who could be salted you back? We read that in Luke chapter 14 in course of discipleship program. You are still moron, corrupted and carnal Christians. You are still emotional Christians. Thinking that you are able to pay tithes. Thinking that you are able to do send money for this or for that ministry when they are loving to beg you to give money. But Christendom doesn't talk about the standards of the real salvation because they have been inculcating your mind to pay you the tithes in the realm of your income. But the Bible in the New Testament doesn't ask you tithes. Bible in the New Testament doesn't pay, ask you to pay or beg for money because he said freely I have given you, freely you give. The same of what Apostle Paul did. With my own hands I labored. If I have defrauded you anything, it is that I haven't been a burden in asking you the money. I paid rent with my own hands. I worked with my own hands because of the labor he even fed in his theological seminary, the Pals Theological Seminar, traveling seminary. He fed Silas, Paulas, and many of Silas, Timotheus, and many of the five other men who were with him all the time. He worked even for them, but he was never dependent upon the church for begging money to pay tithes to do this, to do that. But in return, today you have to pay the tithe of your time every day. Two hours, 40 minutes. Give first thing to first to Christ, as Elijah asked them. When the brook river was being dried up, he goes now to that widow. And then she says, we have only little dove. We have only small sticks. My son is hungry. Even I am hungry. First I would make it up to my son. Then he said, no, first give to me. Until the dot could end, the house was well flowing with the things that have been needed for them to have sufficiency of food. Why? Because first you give to God your time, not your money. That's what Simon is said. Let your money perish with thee. You think you can buy the gift of God or in simple words you can think you can buy the eternal life of God? Though you are a professing, corrupted, carnal, soulish believer, you think you are going to get to get into heaven by the standards of such and such. By giving money of your tithe, seldom care your money, hell with your money. You cannot buy the kingdom of God or the things pertaining to eternal life by the standards of your money. It is what you have been proved when you have been daily walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, daily rendering the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and being found faithful in doing and executing that work of Christ every day. That's how you grow up. At the end of the day, when unbelievers would come, we can purchase a salvation with gold and silver. Those who don't believe the virgin birth of my Christ. Your gold and silver, your working of your salvation with money is as good as you tie your fig leaves. When Adam and Eve, they thought they were tying up with the fig leaves. When God the Father calls them, where are you, Adam? He was hiding. It doesn't come to his mind. He has tied up the fig leaves. If he has tied up the fig leaves, that would be the cover of nakedness. That's how your salvation will be working out with gold and silver and money. So when God the Father would call you, you will not remember about your fig leaves. That means your works will not save you. Your paying of tithes will not save you. Your huge donations to the church will not save you. It's faith alone in Christ alone and taking your cross after believing in Christ to graduate the word of God. 
to become the mind of Christ to these people. That's what it's going to save you. And apart from that, there is nothing on this earth that can save you. You have been called, you have been justified, that's the work has been done. And now to be glorified, it's not your money, it's not your faithfulness of attendance either in the realm of soulish believers, but it is your consistency of walk in the spiritual category of the believers who carry their cross every breath, who walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath. And they love to obey the mandates of the word of Lord God. And they love to graduate, to become, to conform to the image of Christ for which every believer has been predestined in the Lord. As Romans 8, 28 through 29 or 26 through 32 teaches to us. You have been predestined, pro horizon knowledge in Christ. And have been predestined in such a way, dear brethren, you need to conform to the image of Christ. And if you haven't conformed on this earth to the image of Christ, for sure your name will be in the hell. Psalms 69, which you have been read, verse 21 through 28 or 29. He's asking you to give water, you're giving him poison. He's asking you to give meat, but you're giving him gall. For drink, you're giving vinegar. For meat, you're giving gall. Therefore, the food, what you eat, it is going to become a trap for you. And simply don't even understand what are the reasons, though he was ang and vigorous. You don't understand what are the reasons that he's been dead, sin unto death. Why there will be thousands of death angels around them to consume you, but yet a believer being corrected to look what is uprightness in Christ will be saved from such sort of thousands of death angels surrounding him. Because he now loves to know the truth. He now loves to understand the wisdom of men of living on this earth. He knows now to realize that's the greatest duty of a pastor teacher to make it to understand why you have been given this great privilege. Therefore, your body is not your own. Stop working out your abominations in this body. Because, dear brethren, the greater your working out abominations in this flesh, as we find a commentary note upon Job chapter 33 in verse number 23 by the standard of Barnes, he goes to write these words which will really shock you. He says, saying these words, If there be a thousand angels of death, not one of them can mortally wound him if he determine in his heart to turn to the Lord. When he shall have shown man his charge against him and shown his folly. He will support him that he may not fall to death and renew his body like plastering on a wall and fill his bones with marrow and make his flesh soft like an infant and vigor like at the time of his adolescent. If there be thousand angels of death, and this note he writes about Job 33.23, dear brethren. And today also we are asking you, though there may be so much of difficulties in our life, thinking that though I have been giving donation to the church, I have been doing this. If you turn your heart unto the Lord, if you're looking, what is the great umbilical cord of relationship? What is the top rightness with God the Father? Though there may be thousands of death of angels surrounding you. Yet if you determine to come back to Christ. Yet you determine to pay back your body as a living sacrifice to God. Because your body is not your own. You have been born up with an authority of God in you when you believe in Christ. As I illustrated for you in 1 Corinthians 7 principle. Wife and husband relationship. Wife has complete authority over the husband, as such husband has complete authority over the wife. The same thing, your body has been complete authority by your divine husband, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because you're going to be a part in the universal church. Therefore, the burden of Apostle Paul, he says in Galatians, I want to produce you as a chaste words into Christ. Therefore, he's been laboring to form Christ in you. And he's been worried how anyhow in First Corinthians chapter 11, when he emphasizes the things pertaining to the simplicity of Christ, Satan by its cunning fables wants to deceive you. Let 
blessed by any means, you shall not be so, because I want to give you as a chaste virgin to Christ as opposed to one husband in the Lord. How simple it is. Because your body is not your own, you belong to Christ. Though there may be thousand angels of death surrounding you. If there is one interpreter, if there is one messenger, the Malak of the word of God. And we read that in the realm of the pictographical representation. The Malak meant to say the one who has been having in his thought process to make you to be the disciples. So that you can have your blood and wall of fortification in such a manner to be the disciple. The one who is going to be interpreter is nothing but the tongue of trouble. He is going to speak to you nothing but the truth. And we illustrated that in Second Chronicles in chapter number 8 in Micaiah. The man though he was been slapped and fed with bread of affliction and water of affliction. He spoke nothing but the truth. And today... People like such interpreters or the tongue of the troubles are not being found in our pulpits because they want to talk to you sweet sugar-coated preaching and they want to make the listeners to have itching ears because these itching ears men want to listen what they love to have from the Bible but not the tongue of the trouble. And therefore they end up in professing Christendom. The professing Christians what we find over here today Hardly even 0.2% in the present Christendom, they cannot be saved. Because they think of Matthew chapter 18, you know, contrary, saying that where two or three have been present, we can be there. The Christendom will reduce, that's the state of your apostasy to the core. The present Christendom will reduce to such an extent. Because in every generation, it's very hard to find the people who would stand in the gap for truth. Because you're going to find the men who are going to preach to you nothing but lies, bombarding you in each and every corner of life. Because they change the text. If a woman shall not be a preacher, they will make a woman to have preacher and have authority over the men. And this is the way how the Christendom has been reigned in our pulpits. A woman has been entitled to be surrounded by the standards of her children or the things pertaining to the youth, but not to have authority over the men. But they think we can have the woman to have authority over the men and she can be a beautiful preacher. And the people... People want such women to preach and they have changed the text. And these people, they think they can easily find out their life not to be in the real of such burning lake of fire or hell called to be the second death. And you know where these people, they end up? The first two categories, salt has lost its savor. The corrupted carnal Christians, this man they are. They have come to such an extent, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. Besides being corrupted carnal Christians, they love to be what we call soulless Christians to the core. In each and everything you just look, they are soulless Christians to the core. But coming back to the point of spiritual Christians, it is not even 0.01% to count in our pulpits today. They think talking in tongues, doing miracles or healings or jumping around and dancing around and calling that to be the minister of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, they have corrupted to the core. If there would be proper teaching, if there would be proper training by pastor teacher, if pastor teacher would be the tongue of the trouble for you, Rather than giving you to say, God bless you if you sponsor us for one program. God bless you if you donate us so much of your tithe. God bless you. He's not the tongue of the trouble. He is deceiver. Just look your eternal life. You may be thinking you're going to give a donation to the church or you may be thinking you're going to pay your tithes to the church so that you can have a blessed life on this earth in such and such realm saying that I have done this, I will do this, I will be having a good wife, I will be having a good job, I have done this, I have been donating to such minister, I have been done this, so I will be having details of life on this earth for a greater work because you don't have a job, you ask for a pastor to pray for a job, you get a job and the, and the pastor said for you, God bless you and all the things will be fine or this or that. And you know what, dear brethren? He is deceiving you because he's not the tongue of the trouble. 
he is not the interpreter of the scriptures whenever we find looking back in the history of the Israel or looking back in the past Christendom of the present 21st century we find man's rebellion to the core and whenever we interpret we will become nothing but the tongue of the trouble to you it may hurt you it may make you to realize the things pertaining to the viewpoint of the word of Lord God you have fallen short of his word like mine mine tikel when he said to Daniel the Daniel interpreting the dream of Bel of Belshazzar he says to him mine mine tikel and we want we don't want the Euphrates because the kingdom will be divided to Midianites and the Persianites but mine mine tikel what does he say meant to say I have want you to be looking that you will be qualified but you are found wanting you are not having enough of things in you the same thing what he says in Revelation three your works are not found to be perfect before me to the church of Sardis. The same thing what you will find today. You are still yet not qualified. The tongue of the trouble will teach to you what is the qualification before the sight of God. It's not your time to come weekly once and show off monthly once with your tithe and yearly once for the Christendom festivals. You will run to look what exactly will be your eternity after you die. Rejoice, he said, for the disciples, not that the powers of you have made the pertaining to the demonic powers to be subjected on you, but he said, your names are recorded in the heaven, for that you rejoice, he said in Luke chapter 10 to the disciples. And today you're thinking by your miracles, by your healings, you're able to heal such sicknesses. You're able to do this. You're able to do that. You know what? The sicknesses is not being healed because you have done some magic power by the Holy Spirit of God. The sicknesses will be healed when you confess your sins. Micah 6.13 followed by James chapter 5 when he emphasizes when the sin of that man has been forgiven or pardoned, then he will be healed. For unbelievers, the unpardonable sin, why they don't lose their sicknesses? Because they haven't believed in Christ. And that's how Satan has blinded their eyes to such a manner. In this demon-possessed countries in this world, a Satan can have Gog and Magog collection kind of men to be burning in the lake of fire. Because they have their reasons to talk through Islam. They have the reasons to talk about Buddhism. They have the reasons to talk about their doctrinal dogmas. Though they may think they have the record of virgin birth, they don't believe in Christ. We don't care about the things pertaining to your dogmas. Because we are trying to talk to a spiritually dead person. And spiritually dead person cannot understand the things of the Spirit where Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone can teach to you. And you don't have the tongue of the troubled. You don't find the preacher like Micah. You find the 400 men who love to pass down for you to say, since you have given such kind of a great huge of a tithe, God will bless you. You have been in written anathema, dear brethren, because your spirit doesn't love the word of God in sincerity. In Ephesians 5, we have this word. In Ephesians 6, not 5. You know the blessing what in this great episode of mystery doctrine, what Apostle Paul, being directed by Lord God the Holy Ghost, would write for us. He says over here in Ephesians chapter 6, the benediction in verse number 24, he says, Grace be with them, or with all them, that love our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he doesn't say anything. He says, in the preposition N, followed by the word sincerity. And this is a compound word where you can learn to understand that a pathorotas. And the word a pathorotas is nothing but not liable to corruption. And you just look your life which is liable to corruption. Thinking that you can get back to heaven by paying tithes. Thinking that you don't go to carry your cross every day. Thinking that you can have anything without having any trouble in you. What is the trouble? Come back and learn every day the word of God. Give your time to the mind of Christ. Give your time to learn the work of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. 
2 hours 40 minutes and that's a trouble because man is not able to concentrate even for 3 seconds to look into the video even in the TikToks or in the reels if you would just look you don't want to look even for a simple of a second even in those reels also the people are so clever they just want to make it up a video of 1 or 2 seconds so that you can watch you know how cunning wisdom is the man Sometimes Satan may be ashamed looking upon the cunning wisdom of man. Why at least man was being taught the difference between good and evil by knowing the knowledge of good and evil of the tree which we have been told. Satan may also be shocked looking upon the nature of this man. How cunning he has become. How shrewd he has become. How notorious he has become. Just look in your reels if you would find. And in those reels, if you would find, you would understand. Because nowadays man is not having enough time to look even if it is a 30 second video. And some of the psychological fact they want to put, they want to first try saying that if you want to be such and such, and for that he kills another 10 seconds. And then the one solution what you want to be, the thing of that solution so that he can make complete of that sentence if then the then clause when you want to come he would just disappear in one second so that you can watch it again so that you cannot read the four lines and he says that's a psychological fact <laughs> man has become so cunning even satan may get shocked to look how man could be so cunning because once it has been deceived the man, human race, been deceived by Satan to look lie, to doubt the truth, and to believe lie. And now man is practicing that to the master level of Satan. When Satan may be also be shocked. So, that which is not liable for corruption, sincerity, apathos, ah, negative, followed by the word which is called over here, Fetherio and Fetherio meant to say corrupt in the Jewish temple that which was corrupt or destroyed when anyone defiled even to the slightest degree. If there is any slightest degree of damage, then the duty of the nethinims, the sacred scribes, the slaves or the guardians, because they neglected their duties, they will be also let out. That's what a great curse we find in, Math, in Malachi chapter 2. You defy. So here, the guardian's duty was not to let even that slightest degree of change to enter. And now the lightest, now the great work of the pastor teacher is to look in the church and not to even let go what exactly the demands of the word of Lord God, particularly the churches to dispensations. Because we are not to keep the rituals of the past. Since we have now the reality in the word of God, when you neglect the reality of the word of Lord God, rituals will take place. Rituals will replace the reality. Because the logic is very simple. Negligence of the word of God. So the same thing over here. Slightest degree of damage. If you neglect that, you may think it's considerable. We will see. And if these guardians or the sacred slaves, nothing names, who would be there in such a manner to protect them, if they have been rejecting that duty, their entire work will be rejected. Today the pastors are neglecting or making the things happen in the church to be led from a state of knowledge and a state of holiness. So now where they have been led, they have been led into the realm of corruption and not to abide there. They should abide in the paths of the word of God. They should abide in the critical standards of the word of God. But they have led it to be destroyed. They led it to be perished. Where in the Bible you have been coming every day to meet the word of Lord God. Though in Acts chapter 2 or Acts chapter 5. Day by day God the Father added them that, that they should be saved. In Acts chapter 5 they never ceased to teach. First to preach the word of God. And then uh, first to teach the word of God and then to preach. They never stopped teaching and then preaching. The word teaching did ask Kaliya. The word preaching over there is Caruso or evangelism what we read over there. 
daily. The word adds daily. Look your practices, how much you have been perishing the things pertaining to the word of God. The state where you need to abide. The state where the holiness of Lord God the Father should guide you. Now, where you are abiding and how much of in your life has been destroyed. The same thing with your body as well. When we read in Ezekiel chapter 5 in verse number 9 about the word abomination. The disgusting thing. The first pictographical mark of a sign over there is a sign of authority. So who is ruling your body? Or in simple words, are you loving my Christ? If you love, you're loving for Christ. It has to be non-corrupted. But you are a fatorio. Your life has been corrupted. As the Jewish as the Jewish duties of the people who were there in the temple guardians neglected. Though it was the slightest degree, they thought it could be acceptable, but God hates that. Therefore, we have been told in Colossians 1 to be present before God the Father, Aspilos, Amomas, and Agnacetas. Without spot, without blame, having no blame inward and outward, so that tomorrow when you stand in the presence of Lord God the Father, you can be irreprovable. And it may seem to you be fun. You may try to enjoy your life. No, dear brother. It may seem for you to be fun now. Thinking that you can be in the category of the carnal or soulless Christian. And you may be thinking, what is the need for me to be a spiritual Christian? Dear brother, look your viewpoint from eternity. Oh, that they were wise, they would consider the later answers, says Moses to the time of Deuteronomy 32 in verse number 29, to teach us the same lesson. Our life is temporary, our life is not permanent on this earth, we are a pilgrimage trip. We have to get well prepared to the viewpoint of eternity, and tomorrow if you are not well qualified to live your life, or to look your life in the viewpoint of eternity, what is that life you have lived on this earth, so that you can think it's really great. No, dear brother, in your life is an absolute hell. Because your love to Christ is corrupted. And the word over here, what we look over here when he says, Apatharastas, meant to say, that which is uncorrupted. It should be like the risen dead, immortal, resurrection body like Christ. Your love towards my Lord God should be in such a manner which is called to be like an unending existence, which should be genuine, which shall not be decayed. But dear brethren, we find that your love towards my Christ is corrupted because you cannot be saved. In the meantime, who are getting benefited, you know, dear brethren? The so-called reverence. They don't even look the understanding of the meaning of pastor-teacher. Because the first work is to preach the gospel, beg them to believe in Christ, and afterwards is to teach. That's PT, pastor-teacher. The acronym for pastor, preaching about salvation, teaching omniscient knowledge of reality. Teaching, that's what the work is. Poem and Odidas Kalas. Teach, 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 teach. And if you're not entitled to teach, then you're not Lord God's ideal minister. Therefore, you keep up your name like reverends and doctorates and bishops and popes. And this man will be, will be looking your uncorrupted love because constantly you send them the tithes. Constantly you make them to say that since I've been donating to such and such church, I've been giving money to such and such church, my happy family is happy. My details of life are happy. I'm having that peace of a relationship of happy. <laughs> Godliness is associated all the time with persecution, dear brethren. Look into that matter. Second Timothy 3 to 12. Your Esau beyond way of life has always been filled with persecutions till the time he could prove your test. Till the time he can find you that you're worthy. Till the time he can understand that after the examination being done as illustrated two days back, 
You cannot give the costly things or valuable things to the kid who doesn't know the value and the importance of that. For that reason, even in the past of the Roman law, they would maintain him to be under the guardian. And when the kid is grown up, then you can understand that he has been mature enough so that he can now handle the things. But in the meantime, you haven't reached your major, ma maturity. Then, though you have been old enough to handle those things, you cannot. This is what the present Christendom is. Either they are kids, they have not grown up to look the importance of this great and unique spiritual life in the kind of cases of the church age. Neither, though they have been reached age, saying that I have been 30 years Christian, 40 years Christian, yet they haven't reached the maturity to carry the burden of the word of Lord God. <coughs> so God the Father cannot give in your hands that which is of a valuable asset. And what could be a valuable asset? The word of God. Therefore, what does he do? He loves to get you into persecution. He loves to get you into suffering. He loves to make you to first seek and search his righteousness and his kingdom day by day, coming to learn the word of Lord God, day by day, learning the mind of Christ, day by day, gathering the information to look how much of the love of my Lord God has been pending, how much of the people that are really walking in this love of Lord God. Day by day, day by day, God the Father comes up to teach you this lesson. But you're not even moving an inch. Don't worry, dear brother. You are loving Christ sincerely. You may think you are giving that to Christ, but Christ our Lord of our God doesn't want your money. Doesn't he teach to you in the past? I don't want your money. I'm not worried to look about your money. Your money let your perish with thee. He thought I can give the sacrifice in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Then we find over here the lesson which has been taught through Saul, the first king of Israel, in chapter number 15, in verse number 22, Samuel said, Had the Lord as a great delight in your burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying Shamer, the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, to hearken than the fat of rams. That's what these people, they don't understand their brethren, and they go on to think their money is enough, but your money is never cared for us. The same thing in Micah chapter 6 we read in verse 6 through 8, wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a one year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? That is the clarified oil of this olive. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? That meant to say what? Even if he would love to give as Abraham gave his son. But that time it was a test. So, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul, he hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee? To do just, that is, to build back his mishfat commandments, to love, again, the word Ahab, that is, mercy, kasset, the unfailing love of God, and to walk, that is, day by day, growing up into gravity as joined as disciple, humbly with my God, or to walk himself with the humble standards. That's what God the Father has taught us. But you people have taught them, he says in Matthew 23, Woe unto you, the scribes and the Pharisees and the hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weighter matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. This you ought to have done, and not to leave the other undone. But you people have been teaching them that which is absolutely marred up. So he says over here in Hosea chapter 6 in verse number 6, I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than the burnt offerings. The same thing over here in Jeremiah chapter 26. Therefore, in verse number 13, amend your ways, now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God and the Lord will repent of the evil that he hath pronounced against you. That's what we have been read in Job 33, 23 by the note of Barnes when he says, though thousands angels of death surround you, if you would turn your heart to Lord God the Father, he would give you back your great life on this earth. Because he knows very well, he doesn't want you to perish. Stupidly, people die by suiciding themselves for silly matters. Satan is successful there. Man till to the age of 80 don't wake up to learn that his life is not to look upon the family. His life is to look upon Christ's family first. 
Therefore, he said, the cost of discipleship, not even your own life, your wife, your children, your mother, your brother, your sister, your father. In fact, you need your own life, the seventh number over there. You're not worthy to me. So carry your cross and follow me. Till the time you could wake up, till the time you could obey the voice of Lord God the Father, you are not going to be turned out from the evil what Christ our Lord our God has spoken. So he said in Jeremiah chapter 7 in verse number 23, he said in verse 22, first particularly, For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt sacrifice or, sac or, or, or offerings. But this thing I commanded them, Vobe, Vobe, Shamer, call, meant to say my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be, you shall be my people, and walk you in all my ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well. The word well over here meant to say Tob, the house being surrounded by the grace, by beauty, by love, by health and prosperity, something that which is absolutely functional. That is the word top. <laughs> I will surround you with the good unto you, the house being surrounded by the grace, by the beauty, by the love, by the health and the prosperity, that which has been absolutely functional. But today people are not interested in that. But he says in verse 24, They hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imaginations of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of the Egypt unto this day, I have even sent you unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending, you know, daily, day by day. If you have not been in the ministry of daily teaching the word of Lord God, you are either under the ministry of Thuaduas or Judas, as we read in Acts chapter 5, because they were originated from men and they perished. But Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's ministry is from above, from God. So daily he sends, even in the past dispensation by the prophets, daily the present work of the pastor teachers after the completion of the work being completed through the word of God by the apostles, today there are no apostles. But we have to look, the pastor teacher, the daily work of the pastor teacher is to teach, 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 teach. Daily, the same thing you did in the past, in the present, daily to teach. So that your authority upon your body should be the word of God, not man. Neither Satan, because the unholy trio follows up. The world, the flesh and the devil, it follows you up. So dear brethren, he says, daily rising up early and sending them, yet they hearken not unto me. Do you think you will listen in the words? Do you think you are going to change? When Adam was told not to eat, do you think he has heard it? Do you think he is going to walk in that path? No dear brethren, he did not. When he fell from the Garden of Eden, now he will be paining back to realize, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. What a beautiful life I had there. Now, the life over here, because of me, listening to the voice of my wife, the earth has been cursed. So with the sweat of my bro, I am eating up. And for the woman, it's not recreation now, but procreation in the labor pain of her birth. She will realize what exactly she did mistake. People love that realm of pain. <laughs> People love to take that by disobeying the word of God rather than obeying the word of Lord God and walking according to the will of Lord God. People love to enjoy that which is painful for them. That isn't, that's, that's the reason they disobey the word of God. If they would enjoy by carrying the cross every day, doing the will of God the Father, paying back to God the Father the things which are unto him, like the way Job, even for his sons and daughters, the way if they have even cursed Lord God the Father, even in their heart, he comes to give a sacrifice because he doesn't want to have any grudge with the Lord. He wants to have a smooth relationship with Lord God. But how many parents are today coming to the church? Far as they could be worried about their children. Look over here, Job, what does he do? If ever the children might have cursed Jehovah Elohim, so he says, Lord, on behalf of them, even I'm giving sacrifice. Do you know why? Because he wants to have such a faithful relationship with God. And if the world records, if they have might have cursed for sure by drinking and dancing, they might have cursed. 
and the eight, and the ones worker who come up unto him and says, "Your sons have been killed." If not, God's word doesn't go to contrary itself. And the testimony over there, what we look, none like Job upon the face of the earth. But today, dear brethren, daily rising up and sending you to learn the word of Lord God from the tongue of the trouble. You think you're going to learn, you think you're going to listen. No, dear brethren, you're not. Man is so hard-hearted, he doesn't care. Like Pharaoh, Pharaoh at least after ten plagues, drowned in the river of that Egypt, the Red Sea. Because he went back to fight. <laughs> the same thing in your life. Ten times given you greater warnings. You will not learn. You just want to still pursue. You want to take revenge against God. <laughs> just imagine when the scripture we read in Leviticus 26. Or Isaiah chapter 63. He became their enemy and it went to pursue them. It went to because they grieved him. And if God the Father would walk unto you seven times contrary. What will be your fate? Oh man, you think that you could be enjoying a life walking contrary to the word of God. None on the face of the earth without obeying the word of Lord God can be a great success. We learned that from a lesson of Second Kings, of First Kings chapter 13. When the old prophet deceived the young prophet, we look, he cannot prosper. Being disobedient to the word of Lord God, none can prosper. Even as pastor teachers, if you don't preach the truth, if you don't teach them what exactly are the demands of the word of Lord God through proper isogogic categories and exegesis with the right dispensing technique of dispensations, you cannot be prospered. Your ministry like is Theodas or Zudas, but your ministry is not like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What exactly what is there in the word of Lord God that you teach, that you read? If you're, we don't want your imaginations over there to be filled up, read what exactly is the word of Lord God. Let the, let the present Christendom come to know because the percentage from 2 or 2.5 in the realm of just 100, 150 or 60 years back, now we can calculate the professing Christendom of 2022 merely 0.0001 or the days goes on to be even 0.000 to the infinity. None upon the face of the earth. But God the Father has his remnant. As he said to Elijah, there will be few in every generation who will be faithful to the word of God. Because he will never leave this earth without witnesses of his word. He will never leave this earth to be filled with the glory of Lord God the Father at every generation. He comes up to teach the word of Lord God through his appointed men whose vigor and valor has been renovated according to the standards of the word of Lord God. Though there may be thousand angels of death, yet they knew they depend upon Christ. They depend upon the tongue of the learned, the, the tongue of the trouble, and they become the tongue of the learned. And they come back to that angel or the messenger to learn the word of Lord God as Malachi 2.7 teaches. And they come to learn the word of God and one out of the thousand he would be to teach them the word of God and when they have been so they are going to meet the tree of life they will understand to encounter wisdom and then they will be relieved out from the pit of death and their vigor and valor will be like a great child and they will be like a great adolescent kid in Christ what a great benefit we have to follow Christ what a great benefit we have when you obey the word of Lord God. People foolishly search around for doctors, for physicians. Search the word of God. Search the doctor of the law. Search the mind of Christ. Don't think foolishly giving money, you will be found to be sincere love towards God. He says, no, I don't require them. Your love is corrupted. A relationship between wife and husband cannot sustain if the love is corrupted. And you can know the difference in that in your life. Then how much more it would be in the sight of God the Father when your love has been corrupted. And can't you know the difference when God the Father deals with you to give you your food to be a trap, to make you to realize you're not giving him water but vinegar, to make you to realize you're not giving him meat but gall. Won't you wake up? Won't you realize? Won't you understand? 
And yet do you think these people will, be, will believe and listen to Lord and change? No, dear brethren. He says in verse 26, Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their father. The word worse over here meant to say raga, and they became dysfunctional. They became evil. They became wicked because the thinking got corrupted. Therefore, you shall speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. You shall also call unto them, but they will not answer unto thee. People will be thinking, he has more than 5,500 videos in the YouTube. Subscribers are not even 190 or not even 200. Don't worry. We match the scriptures. We don't match the numbers of men. Putting only 10 or 12 videos, having a, having a millions of subscribers, watched by millions of people, seldom care to earn money of any unjustifiable means. We want that which is righteous in the sight of Lord God. Because God the Father knoweth how to give unto us. We don't depend to beg upon anyone. So that you can watch our views. So that you can get back and give us great glory. No, we seldom care about that. We are just unto Lord God. Not unto us, but unto Lord God to give the glory. We are just his unprofitable slaves. That which is our duty to be done, we have to do. And we are not doing it properly. Because we haven't been yet well prepared. The glory of God to shine forth. As Isaiah could say, Lord, up until now I haven't declared. In the midst of the people where I'm living, these are the people, they want lies. They don't want want the truth. They have been corrupted. Therefore I live in the midst of these unclean people, O oh Lord. Deliver me out from this man and send to the people who love the word of God, who would love to at least listen the word of God. That's what we would say to God. We are unprofitable slaves, O oh Lord. We are trying to do the best in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, yet we have the old sin nature which restricts back. At our Lord users, at our Lord teachers, at our Lord guiders, at our Lord mentors. Not for our pleasure, but for your glory. Because this body belongeth unto you. We don't have anything else of authority on this body. We are sustaining only for you. We don't have any other work on this earth to be done. Not to care of our family, not to care for our own life. But to care for your word, to honor your word above your name. That's what your attitude should be towards the word of Lord God as being the bond slave of Lord God. Whether you hearken or not, whether you respond or not, whether you obey or not, whether you come back to do the will of God the Father or not. You may laugh. We are having 5,500 videos. Subscribers are not even 200. So don't worry. We are having a match over here in Jeremiah 7, which says in verse 27, Therefore you shall speak all the words unto them, but they will not hearken. And that's been a reputation in the Bible from the past, not now. But for liars, for deceivers, entertaining clowns, the people who don't honor the word of Lord God, for them, they will be millions of followers. We seldom care. Tomorrow, the judgment seat of Christ, we have our result. The only pain that we go through is that people don't love the truth. People would have been living a better life for truth. That's the only pain. Though we come to give you every day, you don't answer it, you don't reply it, you don't look into it. We don't worry. We don't worry. We seldom care on that. Neither there is a need for us to beg others so that we could preach for you. As Lord God had compassion on them to teach the word of God, so we come. Looking upon the fate of your eternity, looking upon the fate after you die, where you will end up, looking upon the fate of your suffering in this earth, we love to have that compassion and love to teach to you the word of Lord God graciously, what God the Father has granted us graciously. But you reject, we don't mind. You don't accept, we don't mind. You don't believe, we don't mind. You don't change, we don't mind. You hear and let it go, we don't mind. Our duty is to blow the trumpet as the workman of the watchman was to blow the trumpet. Whether they get a lot or not, it's left to you. Because the word matches over here. You shall speak unto them all the words and they will not hearken. They will not shamma. 
and you will call Kara with your great heart, but they will not gane, they will not respond to you. But you shall say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, cut off, and it has been cut off from their mouth. Therefore, he gives an example, cut off thine hair and cast it away and take up a lamentation on these high places. For the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. The same thing over here when he says, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. But these are the people, the truth has been perished, and it has been cut off from their mouth. The same thing is said, whether they hear of Obia to Ezekiel. Whether these people, till what time, O Lord, he said, till they could become desolate. You go on to preach to Isaiah, to Ezekiel, they will hear it or not. You go on to preach for Jeremiah, they will not receive. This nation is a rebellion nation. You go on to preach them. This Christendom, instead of nation, Jerusalem over there, now we can call the Christendom will be a rebellion nature. Don't worry, you go on to preach. Because the love... The tongue of sugarcane preacher. They don't want to learn the tongue of the troubled. So dear brethren, the things that which are good, he said in First Samuel 15, in verse 23, rebellion is a sin to witchcraft, stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord of a God, he hath also rejected thee from being king. You may think you can have a great access in life by by rejecting the word of God. He said no to Samuel, to, through Samuel to Saul. He said, you rejected the word of God. So Lord God rejected you not to be the king. And how much of your life today you're thinking you can be able to walk in the presence of God. So the very first thing of great abomination in Ezekiel 5, 9, the sign of authority. And the next we have the viewpoint of I. And next we have the third one called to be your body. The thing abomination first begins, who is having authority in you? If it is Christ our Lord of a God, then be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. If you are still having authority of your old sin nature to control you, to guide you and to lead you, then he says in simple terms, You have been in the realm of soulish or carnal Christians, corrupted ones on the face of the earth. If you are spiritual, you would be in the realm of becoming the word of Lord God to these people. So your abomination, dear brethren, that which has been disgusting, that which has been abhorred, that which has been abominable, that which could be hated, when your body is been looking in the viewpoint of man, not in the word of God, then for sure your body gets corrupted. You are really not able to understand your brethren when we look in the book of Proverbs, emphasizing the point, teaching all the time, your health is the word of God, your eyesight is the word of God, your flesh is the word of God, the marrow in your bones is the word of God. When he's emphasizing that again and again, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God, he says your body should be fixed upon the word of God because the sign of authority upon your body is the word of God. Your body doesn't belong to you, it belongs to Christ. But since you don't have the tongue of the troubled ones in you, you're believing lies on this law. And though you live such kind of life, God the Father comes up to teach. Go on to preach. Let them change because they don't have the viewpoint of eternity. They're not interested to look what is their life after death. They're interested only for the details of life, what they could look only the sky above. They cannot look what is beyond the sky. Though they may think they have a telescope, they can look many things. But spiritually, what is above the sky, they cannot understand. As Lord God the Father said, unless you climb up the ladder, Shulam. You will not understand the ministry of ascending and descending of the angels. You are not really looking what is the ministry of that sky when you enter about to look right above the sky as the third heaven when Apostle Paul comes back in Acts 14.21. He went along 
to go on to prepare the disciples to be rendered fit for the glory of God. Not many disciples, as you look in your translation, that misleading and misguiding you. It's Hikana o Matatias. He made them to be rendered fit in all the details of the word of Lord God. And that's what beyond the sky for the pastor teacher is. And for the believer, the beyond the sky is what we look to confirm to the image of Christ for which you have been predestined in the Lord. And that dear brethren, how many days more you want to live a life of lie on this earth? You want to live a life of a Christian in the category of a corrupted carnal one. How many days more you want to be a soulish one and thinking that paying money will save you. How many days more you just think it's your life. Because we don't have anything else on this earth to worry. Because after you die, if you haven't done the will of God the Father, you haven't done the mind of Christ to be executed in you. Lord God the Father would call as for Matthew 7, Workers of iniquity depart from me, I never knew you. The reason why he says workers of iniquity depart from me, I never knew you because you haven't executed the will of God the Father. You haven't done that which is right and good in the sight of Lord God the Father. And since you haven't done that which is right and good in the sight of God the Father, which is called to be the will of God the Father, you cannot be saved. In 1 Samuel 15, he guides us. It is not the money, it is obeying the word of God. In Jeremiah 7, it is the word of God. In Micah 6, it is the word of God. Hosea 6, it is the word of God. In everything you look, it is nothing but the word of God. We need to obey, not men, not the precepts of men but the commandments of Lord God. In everything you look, it is nothing but the word of Lord God. Dear brother, think over these issues. Life is too short and the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. And make up your life to follow Christ, to please Him, not men. There may be some disturbance with the wind, at least unto the word of God. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His bachelor's marvelous, infinite grace. With our head bowed and with eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In our ability, links, Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of His soul, that believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us, very simple, believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest part is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where we shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Sothan Lagan, herald the word in season out of sin, because Dharma through my witnesses for it have been called. The number one Dharma through my witnesses in Wellingtonity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma through my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not for it such nature. The entire angelic host of witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His matchless, marvelous, infinite, glorious grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, being thanked for this privilege, O Lord, to, praise you, to, to redeem the time in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord God the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. Amen.